means disappearance and that day we have a festival the festival is called Biraha Mahotsa the festival of Biraha separation B means Vishesh Rup B means Vishesh Rup especially Raha means Rahasha confidential so Viraha means a very special confidential meeting, not separation, with Srila Rupa Goswami. And by that, we will get the Maha Utsaha, great enthusiasm. So that day upon which the devotees have the chance to meet very confidentially with Rupa Goswami in their heart and become filled with enthusiasm for Shuddha Braj Bhakti, pure devotion of Braj that is called Sri Rupa Goswami's Viraha Mahotsa. Sri Rupa Goswami has been glorified by Sri Nathan Das Thakur. He said, Sri Chaitanya Mano Vrishtam Sabitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam When will that Srila Rupa Goswami Pai give to me the shelter of his lotus feet? His speciality is that he is the one person who has Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Star Bitam Yenabhutale established within this world the Mano Vishta, the innermost heart's desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Try to understand it very deeply. What is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Mano Vishta? Manaha means heart, and Abhishta, Ishta means desire. Abhishta, most cherished desire. What is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's most cherished desire? Prema rasa nirjas kurite ashnagan, raga marga bhakti loke kurite pracharan. First of all, Krishna has appeared in this world in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. To fulfill his three desires that were unfulfilled in the Nikunja Lila of Brajini. Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kedishova Neva Sodhyogi Nargutama Durima Kedishova Madhya Sokyam Chasya Madhana Bhavata Kedisham Deji Loba Tad Bhavatya Samajani Satchigar Loba Siddha Loba Krishna wanted to know how deep is the love of Radhika? What is the glory of her? Then, what is the sweetness in me that only the eyes of Radhika can taste? Because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If someone has more love, they see more sweetness. Radhika has the most love, she sees the most sweetness. Only Radharani, through the power of her love, can taste the ambrosia of my sweetness completely. That was the second. And then, what happiness does Radharani feel when she serves Krishna and realizes his sweetness? So, Krishna came to this world to experience these things. This is the Mano Vishnu of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. No one in this world could understand. How deep is the love of Radha? And see Krishna's sweetness and happiness. These things were not known to the world, but it was Srila Rupa Goswami. He has revealed all of these things, especially through Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu and Ujjwala Niyama. They cannot hear properly. So, This is the Krishna's 
desire carries his the internal reason for his appearance. Is that clear? Mahaprabhu's inner desire is the internal reason for his appearance. And the external reason does not mean it's a material reason. It just means inner reason means for himself. And outer reason means for others. So that is Raga Marga Bhakti Loki Karite Parchana. That Sri Chaitanya Mahapu came to give Raga Nuga Bhakti. Now, what is the greatness of Radharani's love? That is her Mahabhav, Madanakya Mahabhav, and especially Swasham, Swasambhendya Dasha. Swasambhendya Dasha is a very confidential aspect of Radhika's Mahabhav, wherein she forgets herself, and her own love becomes the object of her love. Anurag becomes the object of its own experience. So Krishna has no idea what this is like. But no one knew this is why he, he appeared. So Rupa Goswami has explained all this in his Ujwal Nilamani. In regard to the internal reason. Now the external reason for others. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to give Raganuga Bhakti spontaneous devotional service. But within that he wanted to give Anarpita Acharim Chirat Karunaya Bhakti Nahakalo Samarapaitum Unnat Ujvararasam Svabhakti Sriyam Hari Purata Sundar Juti Kadam Sandipita Sadaridaya Kandarais Pratuva Sachinam He wanted to give a type of love that was never ever given before by anyone except for himself the last time when he came. <laughs> and that is Radha Dasyam the mood of the service to Radhika following her manjuris, her maid servants. So, how will it be given? Mahaprabhu wanted to give Kaivala Maduryamai Swarasiki Upasana. Kaivala means unadulterated, not mixed with anything else. Maduryamai, complete sweetness. That means this love has no awareness at all of Krishna's Bhagavata, of His Godhood, of His Aishwarya. That is a relationship with Krishna, Lokik Satbandu Bhat Sambandha. A relationship like you love your own family, like you love your own friends, your own brothers and sisters. No awareness of Godhood at all. So, Kevalama Duryamai. Swarasiku Upasana. Swarasiku Upasana means that when you are chanting Harina, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, without any effort at all, the unlimited sweet pastimes of Radha Krishna are coming in your heart like television. No effort. You are not trying to remember. Now I remember this, now I remember that. Swarasiki, natural, flowing, spontaneous. And not in one place, but going from the, the Kunj to Yavat, from Yavat to Nandagaon, from Nandagaon back to Yavat, from Yavat to Govardhan, from Govardhan to Radhakund, like this. The 24 hours a day, spontaneous. Radha Krishna's Leela flowing in your heart without any effort at all. Because this Leela is the Swayam Prakash, self-manifested. It is not a human imagination. So, and in that Leela that you receive your very beautiful Swarup, spiritual form, and serve Radha Krishna there. So, outwardly, sorry, inwardly, Mahapu's purpose is Prema Rasa Nirjas Kurita Yashwana to realize the glory of Radhika's love especially the Swasambhaja Dasha of her Mahabha and outwardly that is for others Mahapu wanted to give Kevala Madhurya Mai 
Swarasiki Upasana in Parakya mood. Love for Radha Krishna unwedded. Because Radharani is wedded. But Radha Krishna not married to each other in the Parakya mood. And following her maidservant. So these two together are called the outer and inner aspect together are called Sri Chaitanya Manobhishta. And no one could understand or realize what it was. But Mahaprabhu empowered Rupa Goswami with this. And Rupa Goswami through his writings and through his life and through his Anugatyan, his followers, he established Mahaprabhu's Manobhishta in this world. Huh? How is it possible for him to do it? Srila Rupa Goswami is the incarnation of Rupa Manjari. It's very important to understand. Mahabhav Chintamani Radhara Swarup Lalita Risaki Tarakaya Vyuharup Radharani is like a wish-fulfilling jewel who can fulfill all the wishes of Krishna. Mahabhav Chintamani Swarup and Lalita Vishaka Hasakis are Radhika's own bodily expansions. Radharani is made of Mahabhav and she has so many bhav, so many moods. Each one of those bhavs has taken a murti and the murti of each of her moods is one gopi, another gopi, another gopi. Her Lalit bhav became Lalita, her Vishesh bhav became Vishaka. Like this. In this way, Lalita Vishaka Chittatamba Kalata Vindulika Tonga Vindyaranga Devi Su Devi Eight Astasakis are the eight prominent Manobritis. That is the, the psychological tendencies. Radharani has eight psychological tendencies, Manobritis. Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha. So Radhika's eight main Chitta Vrittis have Murtis, deities, and they are Astasakis. Hmm? I understand. So, Radharani also has one mood, and that is that Ye Nari Re Bonche Krishna Tara Rupa Sat Krishna Tara Na Pai Hoi Duki Mui Tara Paya Padi Hati Loya Meaning is, Radharani is saying If Krishna is very thirsty, very greedy to meet with the gopi but she doesn't meet with him. She doesn't want to meet with him. Then Krishna is very sad. So then I will go to the house of that gopi and I'll fall at her feet. And then I'll uh, say, come and meet with Krishna. And she'll say, no, 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 I cannot. I have to do my housework. Don't worry, I'll do your housework. I'll sweep. I'll clean. I'll cook. But get ready. I'll take you to meet with Krishna. And then she said, and when I bring that gopi to meet with Krishna, and I push her in the kunj, and she meets with Krishna, then I'll feel the greatest happiness. <laughs> so that bhava of Radhika, out of praying, out of humility, to become the maidservant of that gopi who can give Krishna the most happiness. Hmm? What bhava is that? But the wonderful thing here is that that gopi who can give Krishna the most happiness is herself. But her mood to serve that gopi who can give Krishna the most happiness, that is manifest as Rupa Manjari, the leader of her maidservants. Understand? So, uh, in this way, each gopi is one manobriti of Radhika and this mood I want to serve that gopi who can give Krishna the most happiness and be her maidservant. So that has manifested. Among the friends of Radhika, Lalita is chief. And among the maidservants who are serving under the guidance of Lalita Saki, Rupa Manjiri is chief. She is prominent. And just as eight Sakis are the Kaya Viva Rupa of Radhika, so Asta Manjiris, they are the Kaya Viva Rupa of Rupa Manjiri. Understand? So Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, Labanga Manjari, Rasa Manjari, 
Manjulali Manjari, Kasturi Manjari. All eight Asta Manjaris, they are the Kaya Vyo of Rupa Manji. As Asta Sakis are the embodiments of Radhika's bhavs, all the Manjaris are parts and parts of Rupa Manjari's bhav. And for this reason, our Sampradaya is called Rupa Nuga. The followers of Rupa Goswami outwardly and the followers of Rupa Manjari inwardly. That's the meaning of Rupanuga. So, all Rupanugas are Raganuga. That means all those who are following Rupa Goswami inwardly and outwardly, they are practicing Raganuga Bhakti, the path of spontaneous devotion. But all who are Raganuga are not Rupanuga. That means some are in the path of spontaneous devotion, they may be following uh, the Subal, one of the coward boys, or they may be following Madhya Shoda in this way. So all who are Raganuga are not Rupanuga, but all Rupanuga are Raganuga. So in this way, we have tried to delineate, just touch the subject of the identity, the Tattva of Rupa Goswami. Priya Sarupe, Daita Sarupe, Prema Sarupe, Sahajabi Rupe, Nijanu Rupe, Prabharipu Rupe, Tatan Rupe, Swavila Sarupe. Srila Kavikana Pua here said that Priya Sarupe, Rupa Goswami was very dear to Swarup Damodar. Swarup Damodar is Lalita Saki. So, as Rupa Manjari is serving under Lalita Saki in Krishna Lila, so Rupa Goswami is serving under Swarup Damodar in Gaur Lila. So Priya Surupe, Daita Surupe, he is the embodiment of all the Daya, the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and therefore his Daita very dear to Daita Surupe, Prema Surupe, Rupa Goswami is not made of skin and bones. Rupa Goswami is made of brain. Hmm? His body is Satchidananda, he has come directly from the spiritual world. Prema Surupe, Sahajabi Rupe, Abhi Rupe means beauty. Beauty, Abhirupe is that beauty that anything you come near, that thing you come near, takes on your qualities and becomes more beautiful. Not that that thing beautifies you, but you beautify that. If Radharani has a white flower like this, if she holds it by her face, it becomes golden and more beautiful. If she holds it in the palm of her hand, it becomes reddish like the palm of her hand and becomes more beautiful. If she holds it by her smile, it becomes white like a smile and more beautiful. So, this is called Abhirup. So, Rupa Goswami is beautiful like that. If anyone will come near to Rupa Goswami, they become beautiful like him. And that his beauty is Sahaj. That means naturally Abhirup. Sahaj Abhirupe. Prabhu Nija Nurupe. His Nija Rup. He belongs to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Nijanu Rupe, Prabhu Eka Rupe. He is one with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Tatanu Rupe. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is pervading him with his bhav. The bhavs of Mahaprabhu are pervading completely the body of Rupa Goswami. Tatanu Rupe, Swavilasa Rupe. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has pastimes. That's Vilas. Mahaprabhu does Vilas pastimes. But you should know that Rupa Goswami. His life, his activities, his writings, that is an aspect of the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Swavilasa Rupe. How Kavi Kanapur has glorified Rupa Goswami? Most astonishing. So this is the Tattva of Rupa Goswami. Now we'll come to his Jivan Charitra, his life history. He was born in 1489. So three years after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the year 1489, in the um, town of Bhakla Chandradweep, his ancestors were uh, Brahmins of the Bharadwaj Gotra. They had come from Karnatak, which is on the other side of India, on the side South India. And uh, from the time of his grandfather, his family had been engaged in the service of the uh, kings of Bengal. So. By the time Rupa Goswami was an adult, the king of Bengal was, the Muslim emperor was Nawab Hussain Shah. And the, uh, Rupa Goswami at that time his name was Dabir Kas. Dabir Kas means special secretary or private assistant to the emperor. 
So he was a very wealthy person, very powerful person, like the vice president of the empire. At that time, in his youth, he was, for his government service, he moved from Bakla Chandragrip to the village of Ram Keli. And that Ram Keli is a beautiful place. There's a Sham Kund there, and Radha Kund, and Lalita Kund, and Vishaka Kund. And one big Kund, Rupa Goswami, had excavated called Rup Sagar. So he was there with his brother, who was the Prime Minister. His elder brother, we know Sanat Goswami, his name was Sakar Malik, his Muslim name. So they had adopted the dress and the, uh, they associated with the Muslims so closely they considered themselves to be outcasts, out of sight of the Vedic system, very fallen. The, the Islamic king and his followers, they're eating meat, killing cows and brahmanas, doing many irreligious things, so they considered themselves worse because we are Das Anu Das, servant of the servant of the cow killers and the brahman killers. So they considered themselves extremely unfortunate. At that time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was doing his Leela in Navadweep. And from Navadweep, uh, the great scholar Vidya Vichaspati used to come to uh, Ram Kelly. And he was the guru of Sanatana Goswami, from whom he learned all Tattva Siddhanta and Srimad Bhagavatam. And Rupa Goswami used to, and uh, Sanatana Goswami used to write letters to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he used to write back to them also. So the first time they met, was when after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had left Navadweep and he was in Puri. And after he had completed his tour of South India, he decided he wanted to go to Vrindavan. But along the way, he would go through Navadweep, have darshan of Sachimata, have darshan of the Ganga, and then from there he would go to Vrindavan. So as Mahaprabhu was coming on the way, thousands of people were following him everywhere he went. And he gradually came to the town of Ram Kelly. So at that time, the king, Tabu Hussein Shah, he said to Dabir Khas, he said, who is this person they're calling Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He was very suspicious because he came with a hundred thousands of people. Maybe it could be some kind of Hindu nationalism revolution, uprising against the Muslim government. So he was very, being a political figure, he was very suspicious. So he asked uh, Sila Rupa Goswami, who is this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who has come? Rupa Goswami said, that very supreme Lord who has blessed you to become the king of Godadesh, it is that very person. And you are fortunate that he has come to your land. He said, why are you asking me? You are the king. And the king is the um, angsa, like a portion of God on earth, who is empowered by God to rule over the people. So if you look in your own heart, you can find the praman, who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Rupa Goswami said, so then the king closed his eyes and he thought, and then he said, yes, I believe he's, he's the supreme lord, there's no doubt about it. So then, Rupa Goswami, in the night time, secretly, he went to the uh, house of the Brahmin where Mahaprabhu was staying. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was sitting beneath a Tamal tree and a Kadamba tree. And Rupa Goswami came with his brother Sanatan. And seeing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they fell on the ground again and again, holding their cloths around their neck like this, and with straw between their teeth. Kala Vastra Kritanjali Vaishnavani Kate Tanti Trinakori Dandra Ibonis Kapati Vaishnavera Abhidana Krishna Dayamor Eheno Pamara Prati Habena Sadhoi Srila Bhaktinur Taku has showed in which way we should approach pure Vaishnavas or Guru Dev. Kalavastra Kritanjali, taking cloth around the neck like this, it is a sign of humility. If someone is proud, they always their chest is out like this. 
But Vaishnav always keeps a cloth over the chest and holding it. And it indicates this is the posture of a person who has made a mistake. So we come before the Vaishnavas holding cloth like this. Yeah? Like in Rasalila when Krishna disappeared, when he came back, Pritam Bharadara is holding Pritamba. Please, please forgive me, I made a mistake. Yeah, you see? So when we become we come before Vaishnavas and Gurudev holding our cloth like this, oh Gurudev, please forgive me. I have made a mistake. What mistake? My whole life. Yeah? Every moment I make the mistake of thinking I am the enjoyer of this world. I am this body, I am this mind. I am the do, I am the control. I am making so many mistakes over this. This is how we approach fashion. Very humbly they fell on the ground again and again and they were crying. When the great personalities come from the spiritual world to this world, they hide their personality so that they can do their lives and they do their mission. But when they meet another person from that same Leela and they recognize them, then they cannot hold their emotions. So now that means Rupa Manjri and Labanga Manjri with Krishna. And Krishna has taken sannyas. He has left everything. He just wants to the real because love and repay Radhika because Krishna said Krishna apologize or Radhika I can never repay you for your loving service but I'll try to repay you when I become a sadhu Pratiyatu saduna when I become a sadhu, I'll try to repay you. Now Krishna has become a sadhu. Krishna was thinking, I am one and you gopis are so many, how can I uh, repay your love? So he thought, if I collect so many souls and I send them all one pointed in the service of Radharani, then I can try to repay a little. So Krishna in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is collecting so many souls and sending them uh, one pointed into the service of Radharani. So Pratyatu Sadhana. So now there's a very emotional meeting of Rupa and Sanatana and Chaitanya Mahapu for the first time. And they're crying, Ah, oh, we are more fallen than Jaga and Mandai. Matulya Nasti Papatma Na Paradi na Kastana Pariyapi Pi Lajameki Purve Purushottama. There is no one more but to Yanasti Papa, there's no one more sinful than me. There's no one more offensive than me. I what to speak of, give up my sinful activities. I hesitate to give them up. What else can I say to you, my Lord? We have fallen into a ditch uh, full of uh, stool of sense gratification. Please save us. If you don't deliver us from this world, it will be very hard for you to find a candidate for your mercy. Because mercy means, not justice means when you give what a person deserves. And mercy means when you give something to someone, they completely don't deserve it. So Rupa and Sanatana are thinking, we completely don't deserve anything more than anyone else. And therefore, to make your name Patit Pavan successful and to find an object of your mercy. If you don't give mercy to us, then you'll not find another person like us. We are so fallen and your name Patit Pavan will not be successful. And they'll cry. So Rupan, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through Rupa and Sanatan has taught us the path of humility. If a person wants to enter into bhakti, they'll have to repent like this. They'll have to feel the burning of regretfulness for their life and for their activities and come in a very humble mood towards Guru and Vaishnavas. So Mahapu said, Oh, your humility can melt a stone. You are breaking my heart. Stop said, you have been my servants, lifetime after lifetime. 
So very soon Krishna will deliver you. Have a strong confidence in this. You see, Rupa and Sanatan, they have a position in a royal palace. They are very wealthy. All sense gratification is available to them without any anxiety. But how do they see it? Like a gutter full of stool. This is the anutap, the regret. But what is our condition? You can put your hand on your heart, take your pulse and see what is your condition. Do you think that money and fame and luxury and a good job and respect in society and comfort and all of these things are stool? Like poison to be never touched, to never be tasted because it's disgusting. And very only a person who has some experience of the exalted spiritual atmosphere by comparison can say that the pleasure of the material world is despicable. So this was the state of their realization. Ah, it is despicable. But in their humility, we cannot leave it. So only your kripa, your grace can save us. Krishna tad bhakta karunya matralaya blabaika hetuka pushti magataya kaischit iyam raganuga uchate Srila Rupa Goswami Pad said raganuga bhakti, the spontaneous bhakti is called by some pushti mark like the followers of Balabacharya they call raganuga bhakti pushti mark and to attain this then it is Krishna tad bhakta karunya Matra Labaika Hetuka. The only cause of attaining Raganuga Bhakti is Kripa, mercy. Not your own effort. If a person is living in Vanashram Dharma and they offer the fruit of their work to Krishna, then they can gradually, if that becomes a support for helping them enter into Vaidhi Bhakti. They'll have to have Sadhu Sangha and some mercy, but that. The offering of their work becomes a support to enter into Vaidhi Bhakti. But Raganuga Bhakti is a complete Kripa, complete mercy huh? to enter into that. So they are begging from Chaitanya, please give your mercy. And they fell at his feet and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu placed his lotus feet upon their heads. And all the devotees said, Hari And Mahaprabhu said to all the devotees, Nityananda Prabhu was there, Shiva's Thakur was there, Namacharya Silaharidas Thakur was there, Murari Gupta was there, Mukunda was there, Vakrashra Pandit was there, Gadada was there. Mahaprabhu said, Now all you Vaishnavas give your mercy to them. <laughs> and then Rupa and Sanatan were going round, bowing down, and taking food dust from all the devotees. And all the devotees were so, bless them all, Mahapu gave mercy to you, you are very lucky. And they were congratulating them. So Mahapu wanted to show through Rupa and Sanatan, how we enter into Shuddha Bhakti. Yeah? Not by our own power, strength, intelligence, studies or anything. By mercy of Guru and Vaishnava. We have to cry for that. Guru Dev Kripa Bindu Diya Koro Eda Sitrita Pekshati Karana Na Hoile Kandiya Kandiya Prana Na Raki Bo Oh Guru Dev, I have no good qualities. If you will not give your mercy to me, I will weep and weep, I will not be able to stay alive. Like this. Rupan Sanatana are the example. And another secret here is that because Mahaprabhu wanted that Rupa Goswami should explain everything about Bhakti Rasa. But Rupa Goswami is in the Madhurasa. So some of the other Rasas, they are not compatible with Madhurasa actually. But all the other devotees, they are in different moods. They all blessed Rupa Goswami. And so he became empowered that he could write about every Rasa. All, everything in the spectrum of Rasa fully in Bhakti Rasa Mrita Sindhu. And then in Uchwani Lamani, he just focused on Maduras. There. So, Mahaprabhu said 
uh, oh, Sanatana Goswami told him, Brindavana yata e na hi paripati. This is not the way to go to Brindavan with many people. And Mahapu later on his journey, he decided, oh, there are so many people following me. When I get to Brindavan, then uh, the people will think I'm some magician and this is my circus. Madhavendra Puri went to Brindavan alone, chanting. And Krishna, on the pretext of bringing him milk, came and, and gave him milk and Madhavendra Puri saw Krishna. So I'll not have this experience if I go with so many, many people. So he decided uh, to turn back. But he had told Rupan Sanatan, you should leave your occupation in the government and come and meet with me. Uh, come to Brindavan. So, after some time, now, they had met with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally. Rupan Sanatan, they experienced extreme virality. And Rupa Goswami, he gave 10,000 gold coins to one grocer in Goda uh, on behalf of his brother Sanatan Goswami. Then the rest of his wealth, he had so much money, he had two bo boats full of treasures. And he went back to Bakla Chandra Dweep, to his birthplace where his family were. And half of the money he had, he distributed in charity to uh, Brahmanas and Pranami to Vaishnavas. And that was half. And then one quarter he kept with his family. Why? Because his younger brother Anupam had a son named Jiva. And that money was to pay for that boy's education. And one day he would become the great Jiva Goswami. So that was very well spent money. That money was kept aside for Jiva Goswami's education. And one quarter of his wealth was kept aside in case some emergency may come in the future. Like that. So even Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, though they were very detached and they renounced everything, they also did it in stages. Understand? They did it, they made an intelligent plan how to do it. Uh -huh. so some money was kept for emergency like this. And then gradually they became fully, they had the leela of becoming fully uh, independent. They were always, but they have this leela to show us. It's like stages in life. So then, Rupa Goswami, he left home with Anupam and began to travel towards Vrindavan. So as he was traveling, gradually, gradually, he arrived in Prayag. Now Mahapu had already been in Vrindavan. And from Vrindavan, he came along the Jamuna, and where the Jamuna meets the Ganga, that is the Triveni, that is called Prayag. And there is a very famous deity, you know, Veni Madhav. Veni Madhav. Huh? So, when Mahaprabhu came there to Veni Madhav, he was dancing with thousands and thousands of people and making everyone overwhelmed, overflowing, ecstatic love for Krishna. And one Brahmin, Dakshinapta Brahmin from South India invited him to stay at his home. Sila Rupa Goswami came to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there with Anupa. And when he approached Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he fell at his feet and was offering prayers. Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prima Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauratvishe Namah I bow down to the golden form of Krishna who is Mahavadanya, most munificent, most merciful. He has appeared to distribute Krishna Prem to one and all. Yogyanamat Thambhuvanam Dayalo Ulangyamak Apyakarat Pramatam Suprema Sampat Sudayat Bhuteyam Si Krishna Chaitanya Mamum Prapadde Rupa Goswami said the whole world was intoxicated with sense gratification but now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has appeared to intoxicate everyone with the nectar of the holy name of Krishna and make them become mad with Prem so I take shelter of his lotus feet so uh, it's the place where the Kumbh Mela in Prayag. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, every four years. So, at that time, there was a great Acharya who lived on the other side of the Jamuna. His name was Balababhatta. He is known as the famous Balabacharya. He lives in Aral Gaon on the other side. Who's been, has anyone been to his house on the other side? Huh? So from he heard that Mahapu was there and he came there. And uh, he approached Chaitanya Mahapu. And when he approached Chaitanya Mahapu, Rupa Goswami moved away to the distance. Balabacharya respected Mahaprabhu very deeply, bowed down to him and glorified him. And he asked, hmm? who is that person? Hmm? He approached him also to, but Rupa Goswami was, oh, don't touch me, I am untouchable. Hmm? Mahaprabhu said, uh, you are a very high and aristocratic person. But he is an outcast, he is untouchable. So don't go near him. When Mahaprabhu said this to Vallabhacharya, Vallabhacharya thought, <laughs> Mahaprabhu is testing me. Huh? Because he could see that the name was on the tongue of Rupa Goswami. His tongue was always Hare Krishna. So then, Vallabhacharya realized he was being tested and he said to Mahaprabhu, Oh, Oh, Mata Swapata to great Garian, yet Jeeva te Varte Nama to Vyamte Pustapaste Juhuvo Shasta Arya, Brahmanachu Nama Grinanti Yate. How can, how can he be untouchable? That's not true. Because if a person only once the holy name has come on the tip of his tongue, Krik, Krik, on the tip, only, not the whole name Krishna, only Krik, the end of your tongue goes Krik. <laughs> so then that person. Even if he's born in a family of dog eaters, but it's to be understood that in his previous life he has studied all the Vedas, he has visited all the holy places, he's done all the austerities, and he had all the qualities, twelve qualities of a Brahmin from his previous life. That in this life, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 and uh, Mahaprabhu was uh, very pleased. And uh, Mahaprabhu said, yes. Name bhaktas to vedi man bhaktas vapacha priya kasmai deyam tato grahyam sacha priyo puja sacha priyo yata yam He quoted one verse of Shastra which is saying that if a person is a Chaturvedi Brahmin, knowing all the four Vedas. But still, if he is not a devotee, a Vaishnav, he is not dear to me. But if a person, uh, even being born in a family of dog eaters, he is a Vaishnava, then that person is very dear to me. Not only is that person a Vaishnava dear to me, but you can give charity to him. You can receive prasad. Mahaprasad from him. And you can worship him as the same as you worship Krishna himself. Krishna is same. He's as worshipful as me. So in this way, Vallabhacharya and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were glorifying the position of Vaishnavas like Rupa Goswami. Vallabhacharya invited Mahaprabhu, please come to my home on the other side of the river and on a prasadam there. Bless my home. So Mahaprabhu accepted. So then Vallabhacharya, Mahaprabhu, Rupa Goswami, and uh, Rupa Goswami's brother, Vallab, Sri Vallab, Anupam. His name was Sri Vallab, but he, he, the Muslims gave him Anupam Malik. So they all got into a boat and they were crossing. So the uh, Ganga is coming from this way and the, the Jamuna is coming from this way and they had to cross the Jamuna to get to Aralga. So when Mahaprabhu saw the bluish color of Jamuna. Rata anta kasya pata nebi pati hari ni prakshayati papi no pi papa sindutari kanti kandali ber indra nila brinda nindini 
Mampuna to Sarmadar and the Oh, like a mass of blue sapphires, the complexion of Krishna. So, because Mahaprabhu was in the mood of Radhika when he saw the Jamuna and remembered Krishna, he began to dance in the boat. And it was a small boat, and Mahaprabhu was very big. It was if a, if an elephant could step on a boat. And it, so the boat was rocking and Mahaprabhu, they were trying to hold him but they couldn't hold him and Mahaprabhu in ecstasy fell into the river. <laughs> and they all thought he would rush, wash away and they're all reaching over the side of the boat. He was very frantic and they're trying to grab him. And they finally pulled him back into the boat and they were holding him and he was still dancing and the boat was filling up with water. The boat was almost sinking. But somehow then they just about managed to get to the other side. And Vallabhacharya was seeing the ecstasy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He'd never seen such ecstasy of praying before. Of course, he himself, he has brain, he's very high. But he's never seen anything like this before. So they came to the house of Vallabhacharya. And uh, there, uh, Vallabhacharya did puja to Mahaprabhu and washed his feet and took the uh, foot bathing water of uh, Mahaprabhu had sprinkled it on the heads of his whole, whole family. And then he gave Mahaprabhu some. He gave directly. He told him, his servant said, Should I offer the bow to Krishna? He said, He is Krishna. Balabhaja mm -hmm. said, He is Krishna. And they gave it to Mahaprabhu. Afterwards, Balabhachari gave the remnants of Mahaprabhu to uh, Rupa Goswami and Balabha. They were very happy. And then Mapu went to lie down and Vallabhacharya was massaging the feet of Chaitanya. <laughs> then one Brahmin arrived uh, from a Tirhut. And this Brahmin was a very learned scholar. And uh, he came there and they began to have Harikata. So Mapu said, oh, can you recite a verse glorifying Krishna? His name was Raghupati Upadhyay. Raghupati Upadhyay recited some verses he himself had composed. Srutim ma pare smritim itarei paratamanye bhajantu bhava bhita ahamiya nandam bande yasyali ne param brahma. Ha! 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 That means wow in Sanskrit. Ha! So everyone was amazed. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very moved. Why? Because he said he was glorifying Parabrahma. So generally when people think of Parabrahma, they think of the Nevrishesh Brahma. Huh? But Vaishnavas know that the Supreme Truth is a person. Or maybe people think that Parabrahma is Lord Narayan. So this poet, he said, Shrutim apare smritim itare. Some persons are studying the Vedas. And some persons are studying the Smriti Shastras, the Puranas. And some persons are studying the Mahabharat and the Bhagavad Gita. Why? Because they are afraid of material existence. And they are trying to find shelter, how to come out of material existence. But, Ahamiha What is my process? I am just worshipping Nanda Baba. No, Nanda Baba? Very jolly. He has a beard, which is like um, uh, black and mustard seeds and sesame seeds mixed together, black and white mixed together. Really? And he's very jolly. Hmm? I am worshipping Nanda Baba, uh, the king of Nandagal. Why Yasalin Dei Param Brahma? Because in his courtyard, crawling around, is one baby. That baby is Param Brahma. If you worship his dad, you have no, don't need to worry about material existence. No need of material existence. Nanda Baba Ki! Mapu was very happy. But this verse is uh, expressing the glories of the Vatsalyaras, the parental love. So Mapu said, oh, recite another verse. So then Raghupati Upadhyay said, To whom can I speak? And who will believe me when I say that Parabrahma is wandering around in the bushes on the bank of Jamuna hunting for Brajagopis? <laughs> <laughs> that Mahaprabhu was 
Mahaprabhu asked him, what is the best form of God? What is the best mm, transcendental holy place? What is the best age of the form of God? And what is the best rasa? So then Raghav Pati Upajai, he said, Shamam Eva Param Rupam Puri Madhupuri Bala Vaya Kaishora Kam Dheyam Adya Eva Paro Rasaha he said, the best form of Bhagavan is Sham Sundar. The best place is Brajamanda. Madhupuri means here Brajamanda. Mathura. Mathura Madhupuri. Mathura is uh, technically within one forest called uh, Madhuvan. Madhupuri. So here, not Mathura. <laughs> Brajamanda. So, then what is the best age of Krishna's three ages, Balya, Paubanda and Kaishur? Infanthood, where there's a prominence of parental love, Paubanda, where there's a prominence of Sakyaras, friendship, or Kaishur Lila, where the Madura, Sringara, so romantic love becomes prominent. So he said, Vaya Kaishur Kam Deyam. One should meditate on Krishna as a Kishor. Gopa Vesha Vena Kara Nava Kishor Natabara. That is the eternal original Surupa of Krishna. Kishor Rup. Eternal teenager, adolescent. And what is the best rasa? Adya Eva Paro Rasaha. The best rasa is Adya Rasa. Adya Rasa. Adi Rasa. So Adi Rasa means the romantic love. Sringaras, Maduras. So when Mahabhu heard this, he was overjoyed. All the Sadantas eh, that he wanted to manifest in this world, they were coming in this poetry. And Rupa Goswami was there to see it. So then after that, they returned to the other side of the river. And Mahabhu brought Rupa Goswami to one ghat. There, the ghat in Prague, called Dasashvameda ghat. Dasashvameda ghat. And there, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Srila Rupa Goswami in that place. Now, that's, this is very significant. Why? Because it is said that the Sashwameda Ghat is the place where Lord Brahma was uh, enlightened by Krishna. So, in the very first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, Kene Brahma Ridya Adi Kavaye Uyanti Yatsuraya. It was the only he, see Krishna himself, who expanded the transcendental knowledge within the heart of Lord Brahma. So the, the Vedic sound vibration is only manifest to us by mercy. And Krishna manifested that realization in the heart of Lord Brahma. And then Brahma, he was empowered to manifest the whole universe. So, in the very place where Krishna enlightened Brahma, and he manifested the universe in that very place now. Krishna in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will enlighten Rupa Goswami to manifest the universe of Praja Rasakata. So Srila Kavikarna Puna has said, Prindavaniyam Rasakeli Vartam Kalena Luptam Nija Shakti Utka Sancharya Rupe Vyatano Punasa Prabhu Vidao Pragi Valoka Shishtim. Just as uh, Sri Krishna enlightened Lord Brahma in ancient times to manifest the universe. So similarly, Vrindavani Amrasa Keli Vartam, the Qatar of Radha Krishna's beautiful Nikunja Lila had been lost from the world. And in order to re-manifest that in the world, just as when the universe is in pralai, devastation, annihilation, it's, it disappears and then becomes manifest again. So in the same way, that sweet Leela Kata of Vrindavan, which had disappeared, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested, invested it, infused it into the heart of Srila Rupa Goswami in that very same place. So in the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Tene Brahmari de Adi Kavaye Muyanti Atsuraya means Krishna empowered Adi Kavi, the original poet, Lord Brahma, to manifest the universe and realize the teaching of the Vedas. 
ओ इट कैन बी इन आदि श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु इन पावर्ड द कवि ऑफ आदि रसा रूप गोस्वामी so rupa goswami has been glorified there in this lila in the first verse of shri mad bhagavata va <clears throat> puse hey rup para para sund kabhi bhakti ras sindhu tum chakiti tahi kai ek bindu o rupa the ocean of bhakti rasa para para sunya it has no shore If you go to an ocean, you have to approach by the shore, and if you keep going, you come to another shore. But this ocean of bhakti rasa has no shore; it goes endlessly in all directions. Parapun parashunya gabir, and if you go to the bottom of the ocean, you'll reach the the sea bed. But this ocean of bhakti rasa, it does not matter how deep you go; there's no end to it. Krishna is ananta; his lila is ananta; his rasa is ananta. किम ब्राह्म जम्ब बे अनंत कतार सस्य सो ही सर कैन आई जस्ट हाउ कैन आई डिस्क्राइब दैट व्हिच हैज नो शो एंड नो बॉटम बट एनीवे आई विल डिस्क्राइब जस्ट टू गिव यू एन आईडिया आई विल डिस्क्राइब अ सिंगल ड्रॉप इट वाज एज इफ चैतन्य महापु टुक द फिंगर ऑफ रूपा गोस्वामी डिप्ड इट इन द ओशन ऑफ बक्ति रसा एंड सेड ओह इफ यू पुट योर फिंगर देयर बी अ ड्रॉप ऑन इट एंड आई सेड टेस्ट दिस एंड रूपा गोस्वामी टेस्टेड इट आह From that one drop, his all his poems, Vidak Lamagav, Lalit Madav, Ujwala Nila Mani, Stava Mala, Dan Kelly Comedy, just came from that one drop. So Mahapu said to Rupa Goswami that the jiva is, if you take one hair and the tip of the hair and divide it into a hundred parts. And throw away 99 parts, and then with that one part divide it into 100 parts, and again throw away 99 parts. That's how big the jiva is, the soul. And these souls, they're wandering in this material world in many species of life. Eight million, four hundred thousand species of life. Stavar and Janga, moving and non-moving. So the non-moving are the trees and the grass and the mountains, and the moving that means the birds. and the uh, different various animals and so on and human beings also but of 8 million 400,000 only 400,000 species are human so they are very little and of those most of them are uncivilized malecha yavanas french <laughs> italian <laughs> spanish eh? all outcasts and outside of the vedic culture but those who are some of them a few are in vedic culture and they are considered civilized but of those who are in the vedic culture half of them only give lip service to the vedic culture that means they say i am following vedic culture but they are very attached and they are sinning com- committing sinful activities and half of them they are following they are trying to follow but out of those oh it's very difficult to find one gyani one who's actually wise and out of those it's very hard to find one of those ganis who is actually mukta liberated from this world no ego at all completely in a state of liberation so then mahapu quoted from shrimad bhagavatam muktanam apisiddhanam narayana parayana sudurlaba prasantatma kotishvapi mahamane that out of Kotish, out of ten million liberated siddhas, it's very hard and very rare to find one pure devotee of Krishna. But Brahmanda Brahmatei kona Bhagwan Ji, Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai, Bhakti Lata Bhij. If a person is wandering in this universe, lifetime after lifetime, then by good fortune. he may meet such a pure devotee and by the mercy of uh, krishna and by the mercy of that pure devotee then we may receive bhakti lata beej what is bhakti lata beej all our thoughts our actions are instigated by our sanskars the collection of the sanskars in our chitta in our subconscious mind is called our swabhav so krishna said swabhavas to prabhatate 
What is initiating everyone's activities? What is performing everyone's activities? It is all coming from your swabhav, your impressions. But if by the mercy of a pure devotee, we meet with that pure devotee and they bless us, we take shelter there and they teach us how to practice bhakti, gradually, 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 then we will receive vishesh sanskar, a special impression, a transcendental impression that you cannot get from any worldly experience. This transcendental impression only comes by Vaishnav Kripa. And this vishesh sanskar, this special impression is called Krishna Seva Vasana, the desire to serve Krishna in a particular mood. And that is Bhakti Lata Beach. Before you were under the control of your worldly samskars. But now, by trying to surrender to Guru and serve under the guidance of Guru, gradually, gradually, this vishesh samskar, new transcendental impression is coming and your life will become under the control of that. You wake up in the morning and instead of thinking, where's my coffee? I want to check my email and watch a movie online, Netflix. <laughs> eh? You wake up and think, oh, Mangalati. <laughs> Vibhavari shesha aloka pravesha Nita chadi puto jiva Now your actions are under the control of that samskar by Kripa. So, Mahapu said, Mali hoi se bich kare aropan Sravana kirtana jali kare se chan Now when you receive this seed of devotion, you have to become a gardener. And just as a gardener plants a seed and gives water every day, so, you have to give water every day to that impression. By Shravan and Kirtan, hearing, chanting and remembering. And slowly it will sprout and it will begin, that impression will begin to grow. Because it's like a seed, the seed has in it some potential. So, Upajiye Parilata Brahmanda Bede Jai Viraja Paraloka be, uh, Brahma Loka Bede Paravyoma Pai. Mahapu said, You give water every day. You are sitting here, chanting, hearing, kirtan, harikata, and that seed is starting to sprout and grow, and it will pierce through the coverings of the universe. Hmm? The universe is covered by earth, water, fire, air, ether. All the elements are there. That means that. Your celebrity, your mood of service went past Indra Lok. You don't want to go to him and any joy <laughs> with the Apsaras there or anything. Drinking the uh, Soma Rasa and all those things. So you got free from that desire and piercing the covering of the universe, it goes into Viraja. Now there's no passion, mode of passion. Oh, Raja, Viraja means no Raja, but Raja, Sattva and Tama all connected. So Viraja means no anything, no Trigun. So you are here and chanting, but your severity, your mood of service has become, oh, no touch of the Gunas. Krishna said, Mancho yavya vicharina bhakti yogena sevate sagunan samatitena brahmabhuya kalpate. Those who serve me continuously without any interruption, they go beyond the... the uh, three gunas and they come to the level of realization of Brahman. So Viraja Brahma Loka Bede. Then you realize Brahman. Paravyom and you come to Vaikuntha. But you have to keep going. Ntavitaru Pari Jai Galoka Vrindavan Krishna Charna Kalpa Briksha Kariyaruman. Then your service mood goes past Vaikuntha. That means, oh, I don't want to serve Bhagavan. God. Powerful. Riding on Garuda with the Sudarshan Chakra. No, no, no. Api Chakta Lakshmi Patim. I give my pranams, but I give up all attachment for the beloved of Lakshmi Devi. Or any Vaikuntha form. No Vaikuntha form. That means that when your bhakti latter is growing, oh, some branch may come off and start to go to Vaikuntha. So you have to prune it, snip. You know, if a, if a plant is growing in a crooked way, you have to snip. So you have to give up any other moods. Don't worship any other form. Hmm? 
Nashingadev, Narayan, Sitaram, Jagannath even. No, no, no. Only Radha Krishna. We, on Jagannath Ratyatra, although Nishingadev is appearance, we celebrate. But that should not be your Ishtadev. We are doing puja every day and you, you, your mantra, because mantra, Diksha Mantra is to your Ishtadev. One Ishtadev, one Diksha Mantra. Pass. Bhakti is icantic, one-pointed. So if any other feeling comes, any other mood, by some different types of association, you have to be careful <laughs> with whom you associate. Then snip, snip, snip. You have to prune your creeper so it will grow straight. There, Krishna Charana Kalpa Briksha Kari Aruhan. And then your mood will, just like Krishna's lotus feet are like a tree and a creeper takes shelter of that tree, wraps itself around that tree. Then flowers will come and fruit. Yaha Vistarito Haya Fali Prema Fal Hiya Mali Seche Nitya Shavanadi Jal. Then Mahapu said, The devotees in this world. And he is chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. But his creeper has already gone to Goloka Vrindavan and he is tasting the juicy fruit of the loving service of Radha and Krishna while still in this world. Huh? But Mahapu gave a warning. He said, Yadi Vaishnav Aparad Uti Hati Mata. Upari ba chindi tara suki jai pata. If a mad elephant will come, then a mad elephant may uh, uh, break the creeper or uproot the creeper and then all the leaves will become dry. So what is that mad elephant? Vaishnava aparad. Offenses to Vaishnavas. Never criticize Vaishnavas. What is criticism? Nindanam do shikirtanam. Just speaking someone's faults. You can say, I had never criticized him because what I said was exactly true. <laughs> no. Sri <laughs> Daswami in his commentary on Sri Bhagavatam said, Nindanam do Shakirtan, only speaking the fault of a Vaishnava, even if it's true. It's still an Inda. It's still an offense. So, what you should try to do is glorify Vaishnavas. Be like Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. He said, Vaishnava era ninde kama nahi parikani. Sabe Krishna bhajan kari e mantra jani. He never used to let any criticism or any news of some bad behavior of a Vaishnava to go in his ears. He used to just fold his hands and say, Everyone is doing bhajan except for me. I have to try better. Everyone else is okay. They all are doing bhajan except for me. Try to be like this. Then you'll be safe. Huh? Don't let any criticism come in your ear. If you hear, then cover. Jump in the Ganges with all your clothes on. Don't cut out that person's tongue. Or kill yourself. These are the varieties of options. Choose one of those options. Huh? Those are the options given in Srimad Bhagavatam. And try to glorify. If you see your mind, you see a fault in someone, then... You should beat your mind a hundred times with a shoe and try to glorify that devotee. If there's even a quarrel between two devotees, don't take sides. Glorify them both. Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur said, if there's some dispute or something between two advanced Vaishnavas, don't take sides. Glorify both of them. And if you do this, Krishna will so, be so pleased, He will give you Divyamati, a transcendental intelligence. How to uh, overcome whatever obstacles or tests are in your life at that time. Because difficult problems come. So Mahapu said, be very careful. Don't make the uh, commit Vaishnava Aparad because the elephant come. But he said two things. Upa jiya ba upari bar chinde tara sukhijai pata. The creeper can be uprooted or it can be broken. So that means, if you make an offense which is, relatively speaking, not so severe, then your creeper can just be broken. But if you make an offense which is severe, then it will be uprooted. But either way, if it's broken, the leaves will start to dry. If it's uprooted, then they'll go completely dry. 
So this is very practical in our spiritual life. If we're not experiencing taste in hearing, chanting and remembering, if we're not experiencing utsaha, great enthusiasm, then there's a reason for this. It's because we have committed some offenses. Uh, and that means our spiritual life became dry. Uh, we take the japa mala and begin to chant, Hare Krishna, but it's like eating sawdust. No taste, no pleasure, no happiness. Why? That means the leaves of the creeper have become dry because of offense to the Vaishnava. So every day, every single day, we bow down to all the Vaishnavas. One check out the Rubes. To stop the elephant coming and smashing the creeper, what can you do? You have to build a fence. If you want to become free from offense, you have to make of offense. Okay? So don't make offense, make offense. That fence is Sadhu Sangha. Because the neophyte devotee will always come up with a justification or an excuse for criticizing. But advanced Vaishnava will never tolerate. Even being in their presence, you cannot speak a criticism. Only if a criticism will come in your mind in the presence of a pure devotee, you'll feel fear. Ah. So when we are in the association of advanced Vaishnavas, they protect us. And in, in Sadhu Sangha, there is Anandita Anakshan. There is joy at every moment. A person who is feeling joy in their heart, doesn't feel like criticizing anyone. This is very important. If you yourself are relishing your devotional life and you see someone do something wrong or hear something, you just go, oh. It's not so important. Uh, tomorrow he'll be better. Uh, the heart is soft. There's a generosity there. There's a liberalness there. Uh, but if you yourself are dry, and you are not relishing, you don't feel happiness, then you seek comfort in glorifying others, that, that uh, criticizing others. That criticizing others is not really the main purpose. The main purpose is to feel good about yourself. You see that fault in that person? I don't have it. Look, look at me, I don't have that fault. Otherwise you wouldn't be speaking. So, very important, be in Sadhu Sangha, in Sadhu Sangha, Anandita Anukshan, at every moment there is joy. And the joyful heart will not have the tendency to see faults in others. And in Sadhu Sangha, you can come to the level of Madhya Madhika. The Kanishta Arikari does not understand the transcendental nature of Bhakti. But when we enter into Madhya Madhika and we understand, we realize the transcendental Temple nature of bhakti, then we see that external material faults in others, they're not serious. They're not important. They'll go away. Like spots on the moon. The moon has some spots, but it's still the most beautiful thing in the sky. So a Vaishnava may have some fault, but still Vaishnava is the best of all the people in society. Huh? So, Mahu said, Nisidacha kuti nati jiva insang lava puja pratishtari yat upasakagan. When you're giving water to your creeper, some other creepers will grow there. They are not bhakti creepers, they are weeds. <laughs> what are those weeds? Nisidacha. Performing some forbidden activities. There are certain activities for Vaishnavas, they are forbidden because they make the chitta unsteady. Then you cannot meditate. So nisidacha, then kuti nati, duplicity, jiva hingsan, envy towards others. Hmm? Jiva hingsan means envy towards others and even violence towards others. What is violence towards others? Not going out on Harinam Sankirtan. That's violence to others. Hmm? If you don't go out and do Harinam everywhere and preach the glories of the Holy Name, then you're looking at the people and they're just drowning in the ocean of material existence. If someone is on the curb, they're about to step out in front of a bus. What do you do? Oh, never mind. It's flat. Now you say, ah, stop, there's a bus. Pull him. 
Eh? Otherwise, if you let him go in that in the wrong direction, eh? then you have committed violence by neglect. So our acharyas say, jiva hingsa, the violence to the living entities is not to preach, not to do kirtan everywhere. Hmm? Make prasadam, invite people to your home, make programs all the time. This is the then you can avoid jiva hingsa by following Mahaprabhu's order, jiva doya, kindness to all living entities. So, Nisidacha Kuti Nati Jiva Ingsana Labha Puja Patistari Jata Upasaka Gan One tries to get some wealth by devotional service. Uh, oh, I'll make a CD and sell it and I'll make a million dollars. Kill that CD! Labha Puja Oh, others who worship me, Pratishta, Honor Don't you know I am a senior devotee? I joined a week before you. Uh, so, uh, all of these the feelings come. I am the senior most, everyone should honor me, you give me respect. Uh, so, you are watering the creeper, but you are watering the weeds, you are watering the weeds. So, these have to be uprooted very carefully. We have to be introspective. Look at us, what am I doing? So, Mahapu gave all these instructions. Then he began to explain to Srila Rupa Goswami about... Bhakti Rasa. Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya and Madhurya. He described the ingredients of each one. Today I will not uh, go into all the details of this. Maybe we will go to Berlin next week and we will have a festival there for six days. If you want to come, everyone please come to Berlin. And we will celebrate Janmastami in Berlin and Prabhupada's birthday in Berlin. And then we'll go to Prague as well. It's very close, only 16 euros away from Berlin on train to Prague. <laughs> so just come, come. So, where are we now? Yes, we're in Prague. Prague, see. <laughs> yeah. So, Mahapu was instructing Rupa Goswami about all the different rasas and how Maduras is the highest. In fact, each ras is superior to the other because each ras contains the ingredients of the previous rasa. In Shantaras, there's Krishna Nishta and Trishna Tyag. Krishna Nishta means the mind is fixed on Krishna, and Trishna Tyag means you give up thirst for the material world. Then, in Dasaras, these two ingredients are there plus Mamata possessiveness. Krishna is mine and seva. Because in those in Shantabhav just meditate. They don't do any service. So Dasaras is high as Mamata and seva. Now the next one, Sakyaras, has all of those four ingredients plus hmm, Asankoch Bhav. That means no hesitation. A servant hesitates. They cannot sit on the same seat as their master. They cannot eat from the same plate as their master. They cannot taste something and they try this and give their remnant. But in Sakya, there is Asankoch Bhav, no hesitation. And the Atma Samgyan. Atma Samgyan means the feeling that you and me, we are the same. We are equal. The coward boys and think that Krishna is a coward boy, I am a coward boy. We are the same. What kind of big man are you? I can defeat you in wrestling. You have to carry me on your shoulders. My father has more cows than your father. <laughs> so these are the ingredients of Sakyaras and then all those ingredients are there in Vatsalya plus uh, actually Atma Sangha thinking that you're equal is not exactly there in Vatsalya in Vatsalya you think you are better <laughs> parent is better knows much better so two uh, ingredients come and that is Palan portion. I have to nourish you I have to take care of you. You are not qualified to make your own right decisions. <laughs> I have to give you some guidance. And if you don't take the guidance willingly, then Taran Bhatsan. Taran Bhatsan means I have to discipline you and rebuke you and give you, twist your ear and make you go the right way. This is the parental mood. So Palan Potion and Taran Bhatsan. Nourishment and protection and on the other hand some chastisement and rebukes are there and then in the highest mood Madhu Rasa 
All the ingredients of the other rasas are there. Plus, what? Kanta bhave ni jangadiya kaina seva. In Kantabhav, then the devotee can serve Krishna with the whole body. The, the gopis can offer their whole body in Krishna's service. So Madhuras is the highest. And that is the Yatotarama Soswada Visheshullah Samayapi. In each rasa there is Visheshullah. More joy, more joy, more joy. And the most joy is in Madhurasa. So Mahaprabhu explained all these things. And told, gave Rupa Goswami four missions to go to Vrindavan and look the Tirtha Udar, discover the lost holy places, Bigraha Pakash, uh, manifest the lost deities, and Bhakti Granta Pranayana writes the books describing the, the glories of pure Bhakti. And finally, the Vaishnav Sadata Stapana establish what is the correct behavior for Vaishnavas. So Rupa Goswami and the other Goswamis together, they fully fulfilled these missions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Vrindavan. So then Mahaprabhu, he went back to uh, Puri and Rupa Goswami went to Vrindavan. After some time, uh, Rupa Goswami came, was going to Puri to meet with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there. On his way, he came to the village of Satyabhamapur. At that time, Rupa Goswami was writing a drama about Krishna Leela in Vrindavan and how he goes to Mathura and then to Dwarka. In the dream, Satyabhama came to him and said, Write a separate drama about me, and by my blessing it will be extraordinarily beautiful. <laughs> huh? Rupa Goswami woke up, oh, what happened? And then when he came to Jagannath Puri, Mahaprabhu said to him, Krishna nyo yadu sambuto na puna sostata para vrinda banam prachadja salakvachin naiva gachati. He said that the son of Vasudeva and Devaki in Mathura is one and Krishna in Vrindavan is another. Krishna never leaves Vrindavan even for a single moment. Then, then, Rupa Goswami understood. Or what Satyabhama told me? Make a drama in two parts. One based in Vrindavan and the other one uh, about Satyabhama in Dwarka, in, uh, first in Mathura and Dwarka. You make a separate drama. And now Mahaprabhu has told me the same thing. So then Rupa Goswami said, I'll have to divide my drama into two. The first part became Vidagda Madhav and the second part became Lalit Madhav. Now, when Rupa Goswami was in Puri, Ratyatra took place. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing before Lord Jagannath. And he was crying. And he was singing a verse. And this verse is from uh, Kavya Pakash and uh, Sahitya Darpan. It is a book from, these are texts of Prakrit Alankar Shastra. The mundane poetry. It's not about God. So it was just mundane poetry. But Mahaprabhu was singing this uh, worldly rasa poetry in front of Lord Jagannath. So it was very astonishing for everyone. Uh, Mahaprabhu, he said, Yaha khomara harasaiva ivarasthaiva chaitrakshapas techun milita malati suravaya prauda kadamba nila sachaiva smitata pitatra surata pya parali lavido Reva Roda Sibeta Sitantale Cheta Sumut Kantate. Only Swarup Damodar understood what his mood was in the previous Ratyatras. But now Rupa Goswami was there for the first time. And now it is revealed the relationship between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami. Try to understand. Okay. How is the relationship of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami? It is exactly like if there is a musician and they are playing some instrument and they are spontaneously composing a tune. First, the tune comes in their mind 
and exactly as it comes in their mind, then it's coming out from the instrument. Eh? What is in their mind, it's coming out from the instrument. The expert musician is like that. So in the same way, whatever is coming in the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming in the heart of Rupa Goswami and out from his pen. Another example, if there's a, a Tanpur, you know Tanpur? Yeah, I was just playing the, this modern Tanpur. So, but the Tanpur has a long string, it's connected at the top and the bottom. If you pluck the Tanpur string, then that vibration will touch both ends simultaneously. So in the same way, the vibration of praying which is coming in the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, same time coming in the heart of Rupa Goswami. Mm -hmm. And then out from his pen. Mm -hmm. So, though no one could understand, except for Swarup Damra, what Mahaprabhu was relishing at Ratyatra, Rupa Goswami realized it and he wrote a verse explaining Priyaso Yam Krishna Sahachari Kurukshetra Melitas Tatam Saradam Tadidam Ubayo Sangama Sukham Tatakyan Thake Lam Madura Maduri Murali Panchama Jushei Mano Me Kalindi Pulina Vipinaya Sprihayati Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in the mood of Radharani meeting with Krishna at Kurukshetra. After long separation, Krishna has left Vrindavan. He was some years in, in Dwarka and then he came to Kurukshetra at the time of the solar eclipse and Radharani and bridge buses came on their bullock carts and to Kurukshetra at the same time and Radha Krishna secretly met. So at that time, Radharani is speaking to Hasaki. Vishaka, Ya Kumara, Hara Saiva Eva Rasta Eva Chaitak Shabbat. That person who stole my uh, childhood, Ya Kumara Hara, that person who stole my childhood, when in the beautiful moonlit nights of the, in the season, Chaitra, month of Chaitra, in the spring season, when the Kadamba forest was full of flowers and the gentle breeze was there carrying the fragrance of Kadamba and jasmine flowers also. And we were, went inside a very dense thicket of rattan cane. And there, though I was not married to him and he was not married to me, but by force he took my childhood. That means the first experience of romantic love, the amorous love means child is an over now. So, Yagomara Hara. Hara means stealing, means that Radharani was not giving voluntarily. It means Krishna by force. Hara, stealing. So, in this verse, all the ingredients of Parakya Rasa are there. One, they're not married. And two, in married life, the wife offers herself to the husband. But in Parakiras, when they're not married, then the heroine increases the desire of the hero by being in Bhamyabha, contrary, in Maan, having a contrary mood. So this is indicate. all these things are indicated by Yakomara Hara. So, but in this verse, this is a mundane verse, actually not about Radha and Krishna, and one woman is saying uh, that uh, before I was married, I met with my husband, secretly and we became very intimate and later I married him but now I'm not feeling the same excitement that I did in those days I remember how glory it was when we first met and she's kind of complaining that now her life is not as exciting with her husband as it was before in those days so it was shocking that Mahaprabhu was saying this mundane verse uh, which is actually Rasa Bas according to mundane poetry because there's some Adharma there's some transgression of dharma there. So you cannot have the poetry which is against dharma in Vedic arts. But Mahaprabhu was seeing this in front of Jagannath. But Rupa Goswami knew it was, rather, it was, he was expressing the mood of Radharani and Kurukshetra. So Rupa Goswami wrote a parallel verse. 
Priyaso Yam Krishna Sahastri Kurukshetra Militas. O Vishaka Saki, here I am at Kurukshetra. I am the same Radharani, and he is the same Krishna, and we are meeting in the same way as we did in our youth, in Vrindavan. But I am not fully satisfied here. Why? Because I want to be on the bank of Jamuna in the beautiful forest where Krishna is playing the fifth note on his flute. This note is very arousing. So, because at Kurukshetra, Krishna is dressed like a prince with armor, with chariots and horses and elephants and soldiers and generals and rishis and priests and, and especially 16,108 wives. <laughs> huh? So, Radharani, I am the same Radharani, you are the same Krishna. Eh? And it's very, we're meeting together and it's wonderful, but, oh, I wish I were in Vrindavan. This was Mahaprabhu's word. And Rupa Goswami wrote this slope down on a palm leaf. And Rupa Goswami, though being a, from a Brahmin family, he could go into the Jagannath temple. But because he considered himself a servant of the uh, Malachas, the outcasts, he never went in the Jagannath temple out of humility. And he used to stay with Srila Haridas Thakur in what is now Siddhapakul, in one uh, straw hut there. And because Haridas Thakur was actually born in a Muslim family, he would stay together with Haridas Thakur. So one day Rupa Goswami, he had written this verse and he put it in the, stuck it in the thatch of the roof. And then he went to take bath. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arrived to see Srila Haridas Thakur. Though Haridas Thakur could not go to see Jagannath, but Lord Jagannath in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to come to see him personally every day. So Mahaprabhu came there with Swarup Damodar and Haridas Thakur bowed down to him. Then Mahaprabhu said, what's this sticking out from the roof? And he pulled out the leaf and he looked. Oh. And he was amazed. Then Rupa Goswami came back from taking bath in the ocean and he gave pranam to Mahaprabhu and when he lifted up, then Mahaprabhu slapped his face and he said, Oh, how did you know? Very affectionately, how did you know my heart? <laughs> and then he turned to Swarup Damana and he said, Swarup Damana, how did he know my heart? Hmm? Swarup Damana said, Fale na parigiyate. You can know what type of tree it is by the fruit. So because he has produced the fruit of this verse, then it's very clear that you must have given him your full mercy. Then Mahaprabhu said, oh, it is true. When I met with him in prayer, that time I gave my full mercy. So, Srila Krishna Karuraj Goswami Pad, he, he says that, Krishna Tattva Bhakti Tattva Rasa Tattva Pranta Sabashika Ila Prabhu Bhagavat Siddhanta Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught to Rupa Goswami all the Siddhantas of the Srimad Bhagavatam in regard to Krishna Tattva, Sambandha, Bhakti Tattva, Abhideya and Rasa Tattva. Huh? The Prayojan, the Prema Rasa. So, Ramananda Pasi Jata Siddhanta Shunila Rupe Kripa Kori Prabhu Taha Sabha Sancharila Whatever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had heard from Ramananda Rai when they met on the bank of the Godavari, mm -hmm. all of that that Mahaprabhu heard from Ramananda Rai, Mahaprabhu infused into the heart of Rupa Goswami. So the, all the rasa is coming like that. From Vishaka Saki, that is Ramananda Rai, to Mahaprabhu, and then from Mahaprabhu to Rupa Goswami, and then he has manifest his transcendental shastras. So, this is the illustration how Prabhureka Rupe, Swavilasa Rupe, Rupa Goswami's heart is one with the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Like the string of a tanpur. What Mahaprabhu is feeling, it's coming in the heart of Rupa Goswami. So in the same way, as Rupa Goswami is perfect disciple of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by Shiksha, Shiksha, not Diksha, but by Shiksha. In the same way, we should try to become perfect disciple of our Guru Devi. One should serve the spiritual master in such a way, with such surrender, with such devotion, 
making one's heart completely empty of all other thoughts and all worldly identity. Like Krishna's flute is empty, he can be full, filled with the nectar of his lips. In the same way, the disciple should make his heart completely empty so that the bhava of Gurudev can overflow and fill the heart of the disciple. Yasya prasadat bhagavat prasado yasya prasadat nagati kutoki dayam stuvam stasya yasasthisandam vande gosh charanara So, Rupa Goswami and Chaitanya Mahapu, they are giving the example. Sadguru, Satsisya. Perfect transcendental spiritual master, perfect transcendental disciple. After some, there are so many pastimes in Puri, but we are running out of time. We'll tell more on Monday. We'll, we'll come back on Monday and speak. Sunday. Sunday, sorry. Sunday. Maybe we'll come on Monday as well. It's about day for let's say. So, we just try to touch an overview of Rupa Goswami's life. And on Sunday, we'll go into more details of his other than Vaishistha, the speciality of his contribution. Uh, after staying with Mahapu for about 10 months in Puri, then Rupa Goswami went to Vrindavan. And he never saw Mahapu again uh, directly. In his heart, he's seeing Mahapu all the time. But he used to stay in Vrindavan and cry. Hare Krishna Tsutcha Spurana Rasana Rasika. He would pray. So the Upasya Sri Mandrita Manuja Kayae Pranaitam Gir Bahad Bir Girana Girisha Prabriti Vihi. So Bhakti Vyashu Dhamni Japajana Mudrangu Padisham. When will Chaitanya Mahapu again walk onto the path of my eyesight? He is worshipped by Lord Shiva in the form of Advaita Acharya. He is worshipped by Lord Brahma in the form of Haridas Thakur. All the devatas are worshipping him. And for his nearmost and dearmost intimate disciples, he has become the Bhajan Shiksha Guru, showing by his own example. How to enter deeply into Raghunuga Bhakti. So Rupa Goswami was always feeling separation from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Vridi yasya prairana pravati toham varaka rupa upi tasya hare padakamalam bande chaitanya devasya. In the beginning of Bhakti Rasapurita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami is saying, oh, Whatever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is inspiring in my heart, I am writing that. So my pranams to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So now Rupa Goswami is staying in Vrindavan and writing on palm leaves his beautiful poetry. Whatever Mahaprabhu was inspiring him to write. And when Rupa Goswami used to write about the separation of Radha and Krishna, he was weeping so much that even the trees in Terukadamba, the leaves and flowers, the petals used to fall from the trees when Rupa Goswami was crying and describing the separation of Radha and Krishna. And then when he was describing the happy meeting of Radha and Krishna, then the leaves would grow back and new fresh flowers would burst onto the trees. So Srila Rupa Goswami, in his poetry, he has given such parts that have never been expressed before. And especially, he has described Radhika's bhav and the, revealed the bhav of the manjuris. So in this way, Sri Chaitanya Manovishtam, Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Radha bhav and Radha dasa. These are the fulfillment of Mahapu's inner desires. How to describe Radhika's bhav? We'll try to give a little, little insight. Do you have some time? Rupa Goswami said that the foundation of love is Rati, the study part. Whatever practice you are doing, it is to get the Rati, a study part. Rupa Goswami gave the definition of sadhana bhakti. What is that? 
When the senses are engaged in hearing, mm -hmm. chanting and remembering all the angas of bhakti for the express purpose of attaining one sadhya bhav, the one bhav which is the goal of your life, then it's called sadhana. If you are just chanting in a random way, thinking about uh, where you will go shopping later in the day, this is not sadhana. Even if you are chanting and remembering God, but you are not mm, praying to attain the particular mood of an associate you want to follow, it's not sadhana. Sadhana is kuti sadhya bhavet sadhya bhav. Nitya siddhasya bhavasya pakatya. When you are hearing and chanting rampant one pointed towards your goal, that you will become like one particular associate. So, when that bhava appears, Rupa Goswami describes Shuddha Sattva Vishay Shatma Prema Suryam So Samyabhak Ruchi Vishchitta Masanyas Kridaso Bhava Ujjate. That ecstatic mood is the essence of Samvit and Ladini. And it comes in the heart and makes the heart melt with so much taste. And this mood never goes away. It is your permanent mood in one of the five rasas. Shanta Dasya Sakya Vatsali O Madhuri. So Shanta Rasi Rati Dasya Rati, rati Sakya Rati Vatsali Rati O Madhurati. Now when that Daibhav mixes with four other ingredients Vibhav, Anubhav, Satvika Bhav and Vyabhachari Bhav and it becomes by the mixture with those ingredients it becomes Rasata that means extremely relishable then Rati turns into that is Bhav turns into Rasa. So this is the difference between Bhav Maya Bhakti and Rasa Maya Bhakti. Bhava Naya Padeyas Tu Bhade Nanyan Buddhina Bhavite Gara Sanskara is Chite Bhava Sakatite. When a person is meditating, doing smarana with Ananya Buddhi, one pointed attention, and they are searching out the samskars, Gara Sanskars, deep impressions in their heart which came from listening to Harikata from pure Vaishnavas in this life and you also have to search out the samskars from the previous life if you don't have samskars also from the previous life rasa will not manifest so then by searching out these deep samskars uh, in meditation then all the ingredients of rasa that is your relation with Krishna the vibhav, anubhav, satukabhav they begin to manifest but then vyatiti bhavana vatma yaschamakara bhavabhu when more Shuddha Sattva comes, more Vishuddha Sattva starts to flood the heart, then all those ingredients, they mix together. And the Rati, that is Bhav Bhakti, turns into Rasa. And is very, very relishable. And it is the uh, Chamakkar. Astonishing. Most astonishing. So Rupa Goswami described this Dahi Bhav and how it turns into Prem. Now what is Prem? Rupa Goswami described Sarvata Dvangsa Rahita Satyapi Dvangsa Karne Yad Bhava Bandana Yuna Sa Prema Parikirtita Prem means that all the causes for your love to be broken are present but the love is never broken. So whatever Krishna does He may come late He may not show up at all he may go and meet with another gopi, but Radharani cannot stop loving him, whatever he does. So, praying is that which is never broken. So then praying, it becomes more intense and becomes sneha. Sneha means when the heart melts even more, that such a slight touch, either seeing or hearing or even just remembering, and the tears just start flowing from the eyes. Uh, this is called sneha. And then pranai. Pranai means there's vishram, but there's so much confidence that you feel that my body and your body are one, my senses and your senses are one, my mind and your mind is one, my heart and your heart is one, my soul and your soul is one. There's no sankoch. It is asankoch. There's no hesitation at all. But that is called pranai. And when this pranai becomes more intense, then it takes on 
the cotillia abbas that is a semblance of crookedness and the lover and beloved they start to be very contrary with each other not out of just crankiness but it's an intensity of love when love when pranay starts to shine even more then this kutulya abbas comes the uh, contrariness and it's very very beautiful that is called man so rupa goswami has described dampattayo dampattayo ekatra satyo apyano rattaya so bista slesha vikshadi neroni man uchate the hero and the heroine they are together in the same place the hero and the heroine they have deep love for each other they want to look at each other and embrace and talk but an emotion comes that stops them that is called man so it's amazing because if two people are not together or if they're together and they don't love each other or if they're together and they don't love each other they don't want to look at each other at all then they won't do it but if they are together and they love each other they want to do it, but they don't that's astonishing so the, this man is one kind of vaichitta it's, it's astonishing feature of prem so uh, man and then rag rag means when the love is so intense that that which would be full of cause be a cause of pain becomes a cause of pleasure and that which would become a cause of pleasure become a cause of pain for example in vedic culture when a young girl is getting is getting married then she is very happy but because in vrindavan all the gopis are in love with krishna then that supposed to be a very happy occasion it is like taking poison oh no i don't want to move from my mama's house to the mother-in-law's to the sasral huh? and on the other hand that which is a cause of pain becomes a source of happiness if it gives you a chance to meet with krishna just like once lalita said oh look at brother ani she was went running up to the top of govardhan hill the the stones are very sharp like razor blades and the hot sun is shining and making them hot like burning coals and radharani has very soft bare feet and she's running up on those stones but she feels as if she's standing on soft lotus petals and she's not moving because in the distance she can see in the valley krishna is there playing with his friends so that love that makes pain into pleasure is called rag and when that becomes more intense then it's called anurag huh anurag has so many symptoms <laughs> in anurag then the lover becomes so one has such a thirst to drink the sweetness of the beauty of one's lover that it doesn't matter how much you drink you think you did not drink any drop at all in fact his beauty is so much newer at every moment that even if you meet with him then the next moment you think you did not meet with him and the next moment you wonder who is he <laughs> Radharani said to Lita, "Oh, Lita, you know there's a there's a village in Navadvip called Kobla, Kobla village. So Kobla village comes from the Sanskrit Kobala. Kobala means who's that boy? And that's in Ritri where Radha Kund is. So Radharani in Anurag, she says to Lita, 'Kobala, who's that boy?' Lalita said, 'What are you talking about? You just spent the whole night with him.'" You just came from his lap. Radharani said, "Don't uh, make fun of me. Don't ridicule me." Let me just say, "I'm not ridiculing. I personally brought you by my own hand and put you in his lap. You have been with him the whole night." Radharani said, "Oh, maybe. <laughs> it may be, but it seems as if the whole night passed like a flash of lightning. Eh? Actually, Yoga Maya made the night like the night of Lord Brahma millions of years." but afterwards it was like a flash of lightning and i was not able to drink even one drop of his beauty alas this is a anurag so anurag and when anurag becomes more intense then it becomes the mahabhav mahabhav has three features anuraga so sandeda dasam prapa prakasita yavadas ashray vritis jet bhava itta vidyate the meaning is that there is a swasambhedya dasha that means that radharani 
she sees Krishna and he's so beautiful. But when she sees him, her love increases and increases more and more. And she forgets herself and even forgets Krishna and she's just absorbed in tasting the sweetness. And then her anurag starts to look at her own anurag. And so her own sweetness, which is newer and newer every moment, is tasted by anurag, which sees that tasting as newer and newer at every moment. And so she goes, Pff. It's the, just the, that experience of Mahabhav is indescribable and it can only be known by the one who is experiencing it. So it is called Swasambeja Dasha. Swasambeja Dasha and Prakashita. Prakashita means Radharani has all Asta Sattvic Bhavs at the same time. Stam, uh, That means stamba, trembling, sweda, perspiration, romance, hair standing on end, swarabhanga, voice is choking, <laughs> vapor too, trembling, mm, pralai, becoming completely unconscious, losing consciousness, asru, tears coming from the eyes, and vaivarnya, that means Radharani is golden but sometimes she changes colors in her bhav. If she's meeting with Krishna and she hears Abhimanyu is coming, then she goes completely white. <laughs> then Abhimanyu sees and walks straight by. And one thinks, why he didn't recognize his own wife? <laughs> because his wife is golden and he's also a person who was white like a conch shell. So in this way, Radharani's own Sattvic Bhav saves her from being caught by Abhimanyu. So these are the different Sattvic And all eight Sattvic Bhavs, they come in Radharani at the same time. That is called Udipta Bhav. So that's the second symptom of Mahabhav. And then the next symptom is called uh, Yavadashrai Vritti. That means that whatever she's feeling, that vibration comes out from her. And if anyone is close enough to see or hear her, they become pervaded with her experience. So her experience is transferred to them. So that is called Yavadashrai Vritti. And Radharani's praying comes Mahabhav, Rudabhav, Adi Rudabhav. Modan Mohan up to Madan. And in Madanakya Mahabhav, one of the features is Sarva Bhavud Golasi Madano Yam Paratpara. That means that all the previous moods of Rati, Prem, Sneya, Man, Pranaya, Raga, Anubhava, Mahabhava, they all come at the same time. That's one of the features of, of Radhika's Madan. There are other features, but I'll just touch on that. So now, I've just given a brief discussion of all these different stages. So I want to give one, just one verse of Rupa Goswami. And in one verse, everything is there. All that I've just described about Radharani's love, everything is there in one verse. So Ravananda Posi Jato Siddhanta Shulia Prabhu Rupa Kripa Kori Taha Sabha Sansriya We said, that whatever Mahaprabhu heard from Ramana and Rai, that's what he gave to Rupa Goswami. So this verse is of Rupa Goswami, so Jwani Lamani, but you'll find it in Ramana and the Sabbath also. Radhaya bhavatascha chit jatani sveda vilapya kramat yunjan adrini kunja kunja pate nirduta beda brahman chitraya swayam anvaranja iha brahman dahamo dere buyo vina varaga hingala varai singar karyu kriti this verse is spoken by Vrinda Devi. She's right here, you can check with her. She'll confirm everything. So Vrinda Devi, she's saying, Oh, oh Krishna, you and Radhika, you meet together in a very beautiful kunj in the Govardhan hill. You meet together like two maddened elephants. Like the, when the king of elephants meets with his mate, they play in such a way. You know, Radha Krishna's Leela is always compared to the, the, the intoxicating play of the king of elephants with his mate. Why? This illustrates the density of Avesh. When elephant is enjoying with his mate, then he doesn't notice anything that's going on. Nothing can disturb. So Radha Krishna is so absorbed in their loving pastimes, the density of their Avesh is impregnable. 
They don't know anything but each other. Even they don't know who am I. Na so Ramana na Hamaramani. They become so absorbed in relishing each other's sweetness. So, O oh Radha Krishna, O oh Krishna, when you meet with Radhika in the Kunjas at Giriraj Govardhan, you are like the king of elephants. And at that time, Shringar, that means romantic love himself, has become an artist. And just as an artist who wants to decorate a mansion, first he takes shellac and he begins to melt the shellac and the, sh and the, the shellac mixes together and then he takes some red vermilion and he pours the red vermilion into the mix of the shellac and he mixes it together and then he paints the inside of the mansion and when the uh, mansion is painted if anyone comes inside that mansion they look and they go oh, it's amazing so here Brinda Devi is saying that uh, Sringar, that is the, uh, the romantic love himself is an artist and he's taken Krishna's heart and Radhika's heart like shellac and then he's heating them and how did he heat them? Through Radhakrishna's own perspiration, the heat of their own perspiration and now the two hearts of Radhakrishna have slowly melted and they've become one. And they've forgotten who am I. Sometimes Krishna thinks I am Radhika and sometimes Radhika thinks I am Krishna. They become confused. Sometimes Radhika will play the role of Krishna and Krishna will play the role of Radhika. And so now their hearts are mixed together. They've forgotten who am I. And uh, the artist has mixed in the vermilion into their love and painted the universe. Painted the inner walls of the mansion of the whole universe. So, the meaning is this. Now, all the stages of praying Rupa Goswami has given in this poem. Why? First of all, Rati, the Stahibar, that is the artist. Just as an artist has a palette with different colors on and he mixes them to make his paint. So, your Stahibar is the artist. And all the Vibhav, of Satvikabhav, all the ingredients of Ras are mixed together eh, on the platform of Rati. Eh, and it becomes praying. Now what is Prem? So Rati is the artist here. The next stage of love is Prem. What is Prem? Prem is that love that all the obstacles are there, that it should be broken, that relationship should be broken, but it's never broken. That is indicated here by Radhaya Bhavatas. Oh Radhika, you're meeting with Krishna. You should not meet with him because you are married to Abhimanyu. So, this is a cause for your relationship to be broken because you have to marry someone else. But the love was never broken and you're meeting it. So, Prem is indicated here. Prem, then Sneha. Sneha is characterized by the melting of the heart. So, here it is said the artist is taking the two hearts of Radha Krishna and melting them. Now, Vilapya Kramat, that means they're melting slowly. Why are they melting slowly? They should melt quickly, but they're melting slowly because Radharani has some man. If if Krishna, if Radharani has heard that Krishna went to meet with another gopi, then when he comes, then Radharani is, when she finally embraces him, she's happy to embrace him, but it's like a tapta ikshu. Tapta ikshu means hot sugarcane juice. If you have sugarcane juice and it's very hot, then you sip it and it tastes so sweet. It's so sweet, but it's burning your mouth. But it's so sweet that you cannot... So hot, it's burning your mouth. But so sweet, you cannot spit it out. <laughs> so in the same way, when R Krishna meets with Radharani, but she knows that he visited another gopi first, she's burning <laughs> with some jealousy. Hmm? So the burning is there, but Krishna's so sweet, she cannot get rid of it. So because of this, the, uh, the melting of the heart snare is melting slowly because Radharani still has some man. Slowly, slowly, this man goes away, and then pranaya comes. So Rupa Goswami is saying, kundra brahman." In your loving pastimes, the idea that there's a difference between you is washed away. So now Radha Krishna are playing, and Radhika thinks, "Oh, Krishna's body is like my body. My body is like Krishna's body. We are one heart, one mind, one senses, one soul, everything." And without any hesitation, 
Now they're playing together in the Nikunji. So, the uh, Rati, Prane, Sneha, Man, Pranay, Rag. Here, Rag is the, the red color. The vermilion that the artist is adding because Rag means uh, deep love and Rag means red also. And Rag in the advanced stage is Anurag that makes every experience newer and fresher at every moment. When Radha, Radha and Krishna meet, though they're meeting, they still want to meet. And though they're meeting, they feel as if they have not met. And praying by Chitya comes. Angasti teipi daitei kimapi pralapam ha mohaneti maduram vidadat akasmat na shamanu raga madavivala mohanangi shamamani jati kapi nikunja sinni. Radharani is in the lap of Krishna, but she becomes so absorbed. Oh, his words are so sweet. And she becomes absorbed in the sweetness of his words that she cannot even experience Krishna, only the sweetness of his words. Uh, and then she says, where did Krishna go? And though she's sitting in the lap of Krishna, she starts to cry, Ha Mohan, Ha Mohan, where are you, where are you? Hmm? So this is the, though they're meeting, but they feel that they're not meeting and become desperate to meet. Hmm? This is the meaning of the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna. Means, Hare Krishna means Radha and Krishna meeting. Hmm? Hare Krishna, Radha Krishna meeting. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Now Radha, Krishna is separate and Radha is separate. No, they are not separate. They are still meeting. But Radharani is calling Krishna, Krishna, where are you? And Krishna is crying, oh, Hari Hari, Radha and Radhika, where are you? <laughs> because of Anurag. So here, this is the vermilion that makes every moment new. And each moment is forgotten and we never met before. So then this is Anurag. And then it becomes Mahabhav. Now, how is this poem describing Mahabhav? The three symptoms of Mahabhav we said. First, the Swasambhedya Dasha. In Swasambhedya Dasha, then Radhika forgets who am I and who is Krishna. So Rupa Goswami wrote, Neduta Beda Brahman. There is no mistake of thinking that we are separate from each other. Then, Prakashita. That is indicated by the word Sweda Kramat that their perspiration is melting their hearts because the swayed by upalakshan, by association, indicates trembling, becoming stunned, faltering of the voice, becoming pale and all the astasatic bhavs are indicated by the that word swayed, perspiration. Then the last one, Yavadashrai Briti, that when the artist has painted the inside of the mansion, if anyone comes in, there you go, oh, how wonderful. So in the same way, Rupa Goswami is saying, Radha Krishna's love has decorated the inside walls of the whole universe. In other words, when Radha Krishna meets in Vrindavan, then Radhika's praying is so powerful, it spreads throughout the universe. It goes, covers beyond the coverings of the universe even. The demigoddesses in heaven are crying. Lakshmi Devi in Vaikuntari is trembling by the waves of Radharani's praying. But they cannot know what she's experiencing. Who can know? So Rupa Goswami Pada has said, Vrindavane vihayato hiya keli kunje mahatadvi papravara kautuka vipramena sandashaya sayuvayo vadanara vindam tandvam videhi mahi devi kripam pasita Rupa Goswami is praying, oh, when will I be there as Rupa Manjari and looking through the Randra, Randra Jala Randra, that means the lattice windows of the Kunj and watching the beautiful, ever fresh pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Pranayamaya Vayasya Kunja Randra Pitakshi Shititalaman Labda Nanda. Uh, al alanda mor champatanti pratirata vidhanu chestita chitta chitra smarati uh, nevrita nikunje radhika krishna chandro 
Bhagavad Gita is saying, Oh, the maid servants, like himself as Rupa Manjuri, Rati Manjuri, Lavanga Manjuri, they come and they gather around the lattice windows of the Kunj and they look inside and see the beauty of Radha and Krishna's embrace. And seeing this, they become so ecstatic. Chititalam Anulab Dananda Murcham Patanti. They become so ecstatic. Why? Because Yavada Shraigriti. The power of Radharani spring spreads out and it pervades them completely. And they faint in ecstasy and fall to the ground. All the Mandris are lying on the ground here and they are unconscious. So this is what it means that the whole universe was painted red and when you see it, ah, you will faint. So in this way, in one verse, Rupa Goswami has mm, described Radhika's Madanaki Mahabhav because it includes all the other stages and the specific symptoms of her prayer. There was never any kavi, any poet before who has manifested this. Therefore, in the first verse of, of Srimad Bhagavatam, Tene Brahma Rijiya Adi Kaviye Bhu Yanti Yatsuraya it is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who inspired in the heart of Rupa Goswami, the Adi Kavi, the Kavi of Adi Ras, Sringa Ras. And when the devotees hear that poetry and realize the sweetness of Radha Krishna, Bhuyanti Yatsuraya, they all faint. There in verse, first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhuyanti Yatsuraya, the devotees faint. So, <coughs> Sila Rupa Goswami, in the end of his life, his last poem is his best poem. It is said that the song of a swan is very beautiful. But the last song that the swan sings just before they pass away, that is the swan song. That is the most beautiful song. So in the same way, the last poem of Srila Rupa Goswami is called Utkali Kavallari. And there he has opened his heart. So Rupa Goswami in the beginning he says, Prapadya Brindavana Madhyamika Kosanna Sav Utkalika Kulatma Udghatyami Jwalita Kuturam Vaspasimudram Ridimuditasya. I am here alone in the forest of Brindavan. Oh Brindavan! I am taking shelter of you. And I am feeling great pain. My heart is in extreme distress. And now I am going to open my heart. And show the scars. If very, very hot water will fall on you, then you will have scars. So Rupa Goswami said, now I am going to open my heart and show the scars in my heart which have been burned there by the hot tears of separation I am crying inside. This is Utkali Kavalli. And there, Step by step, he's showing bhajan. First, remembering the, the roop of Radha and Krishna. There are several verses describing the roop of Radha and Krishna. And then the gun of Radha and Krishna. The qualities. Then the parika, the associates of Radha and Krishna. And finally, the prema moyi seva. Loving service in the leela of Radha and Krishna. Huh? Very beautiful. Rupa Goswami Pad said, Satoyam na viksha punaya manama nadanaya vishantam stri vaisham subala suridam suridam giraya vishantam stri vaisham subala suridam varaya gira idam teisa kutam bachana avadaruch chalitadis skalato pa gopa pavaram when will that day come? When Krishna has been less than 
excellent in his behavior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a very strong suspicion that he went to visit Chandravali. So Radharani has become very upset. And she's calling Rupa Manjri. Rupa Goswami said, when will Radharani call me? Come here. She cannot say to Lalita and Vishaka, because sometimes if there's a quarrel between Radha Krishna, Lalita and Vishaka, they may sometimes go on Radharani's side and sometimes on Krishna's side. But she can count on Rupa Manjri. Because Rupa Manjri will always be on Radhika's side. If Krishna is wrong, she'll be on Radhika's side. And if Radhika is wrong, she'll still be on Radhika's side. <laughs> if Radhika is happy, Rupa Manjari is happy. If Radhika is sad, Rupa Manjari is sad. If Krishna is happy, but Radhika is happy, she's happy. If Radhika is happy, but Krishna is not happy, it's okay. <laughs> she'll always take the side of Radhika. So Radhika called, Hey Rupa Manjari, come here. Krishna is sharp. Shant means a person who is very nice to my face, but by, behind my back he is making so many offenses. So, I don't want to see his black face here again. I have my pride. So, go and guard the gate of my kunj. And make sure that if Krishna comes here, he cannot meet with me. But be careful. Vashantam stri vesham suridam subala suridam baraya gira. Krishna, she does not say Krishna. She says, hmm, the subal surit, that friend of subal. She's so angry with Krishna, she doesn't want to say his name. That friend of subal is so crooked, so offensive. I don't want to see his face here again, but be careful. Vishantam Stri Vaisham. He may borrow some clothing from his cousin, Kundalata. You have to also be careful of Kundalata. <laughs> Krishna's cousin. She's also Radharani's friend, but because she's Krishna's cousin, sometimes she's like a double agent. <laughs> so she, she may lend some of her clothes to Krishna, and Krishna may come dressed up as a gopi, so then he, when he comes to the gate, he'll walk straight in. But watch out for him. He is very tricky. Mm -hmm. And if he comes and speaks very... Mm -hmm. words like honey, very sweet, <laughs> and very persuasive words, avadai which chalati or rupamati, make your heart very hard like a stone. <laughs> Don't listen to him. Don't give in. So then rupamati, very dutifully, bowed before Radhika and went out to stand on God. <laughs> Watching. Gopis are coming and going. Then Rupa Manjari saw. There's one Shamasaki. A gopi with a very beautiful complexion like a fresh rain cloud. And then she looked and noticed, oh, it's Krishna. So then Rupa Manjari called out, Hey, Mohini Murti! Because you know in Srimad Bhagavatam, Supreme Lord takes a female form of, of Mahini Murti to cheat the demons of the nectar and give the nectar to the devotees. So Rupa Manji called, Hey Mohini Murti! There are no demons here, so your services are not required. <laughs> so I think that you should go back where you came from and meditate on your sins. You think on your, meditate on your own faults. So then Krishna and speak very sweet words with tears in his eyes to Rupa Manjari. Many pastimes. One day, Rupa Goswami was writing a poem. And he wrote, Navagorochana Gorim Pravarindivaram Baram Manistavaka Vidyoti Veni Vyalamana Panam Srila Sanatanga Swampad said, Oh, my dear Rupa, what are you writing? Let me see. He looked. Navagoro Chara Gorim 
the complexion of Radhika is like fresh Gorochana. One golden pigment that comes from the hooves of the cows. Navarindi Varambaram and her cloth is like a blue lotus flower. Mani Stavaka Vidyoti and on the uh, top of her long beautiful braid there's an ornament of jewels that makes her braid look like the jewels on the crown of a black serpent. So Nathan Goswami Pad said, Oh Rupa, a black serpent is, uh, makes everyone fearful, but Radharani makes everyone happy. A black serpent is full of poison, but Radharani is full of nectar. I think that this simile is uh, not appropriate. So then Rupa Goswami said, all right, can you suggest another, an alternative? So Rupa Goswami, Goswami took his pen, but he's a great poet, he wrote so much, but he was just completely out of ideas that day. I can't think of anything now, I'll think about it and I'll tell you later. Then Rupa, then uh, Sanatana Goswami, he was going to around Govardhan and he came to Radhakund. And just when he came on the north bank of Radhakund, he saw some beautiful girls were playing and one was sitting on a swing and the others were pushing her and singing. So he saw behind her there was a deadly black snake. And he ran, oh Lali Lali, be careful, be careful. And suddenly they all disappeared. There were no beautiful girls, no swing, no snake. Everything disappeared. And then he realized that he had the darshan of Radhika and the Sakis were pushing her on the swing. And her veiny, her braid, actually was like a black snake with the jewels on the top. Then he came back to Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami said, can you change this? Sanat Goswami said, whatever you write is fine with me. <laughs> the meaning of this pastime is that Rupa Goswami is not making some creative literature. Every word that he wrote, he realized it first and then he wrote it down. Not like people today, they write so many books. Even having no realization, they're making books like the Patis. <laughs> <laughs> but Rupa Goswami is seeing everything and then writing. So every single word of Rupa Goswami is invested with the Vishuddha Sattva. And if you will take shelter of his poetry, by the mercy of Guru and Gauranga and the prampara of Rupa Goswami, then all, each word will manifest in the heart like a month. So Rupa Goswami in this poem, that's the first verse of Chaturpushpanjali, but in the last verse, he said, Karanam muhu ate param thava brindavana chakravartini apikeshi ripayor yaya bhavetsa chaturpratana bhajanam jana. In this poem, Rupa Goswami has glorified Radhika, her complexion, her cloth, her braid, her smile, her eyes, her ornaments, the way she walks, the way she eats tambul, everything. And then in the end, he says, Oh Radhika, oh Brindavan Chakravartini. Chak Chakra means the will and Varti is the axle, because everything rotates. So Radharani is Brindavan Chakravartini, that means in all the Brindavan Leela, everything rotates around Radharani, including Krishna. So Radharani is Brindavan Chakravarti. Uh, she said, Oh Brindavan Chakravarti, Oh Radhika, just. Mm, in, Radharani said, I am very pleased with you, I want to give you a benediction. And Rupa Manjari is praying that if you want to give me a benediction, then give me this benediction. That before Krishna can meet with you, just as I have offered you many flattering sweet words glorifying your complexion, your clothing, your ornaments, your hair, your smile, your eyes. In the same way, Krishna will have to flatter me in order first before he gets a chance to meet with you. When Radharani heard this request, she thought, very good. Tatastu. <laughs> so be it. So Rupa Manjari is so clever that she never wants anything from Radhika. Even the benediction that she gets is a benediction that will please Radhika. Because if, Ra if Krishna will have to flatter Rupa Manjari like this, before he gets a ch chance to meet with her, then that makes Radharani's status go up and up. So, uh, when Krishna was dressed as a Shamasaki and could not get in, then, Yadkin Karishu Bahusha Kaluka Kahani. 
with tears in his eyes, he has to flutter Rupa Manjri like that. Navagoro Chanagorim Pravarindi Your complexion is like fresh Rupa Or Rupa Manjri, your power is like this, your ornaments, your smile, your eyes. But Rupa Manjari is remembering the words of Radharani. Make your heart very hard. <laughs> Don't let him into my coach. <laughs> so in this way, oh, see Krishna, who is the controller of all the worlds, who gives mercy to everyone. He is begging the mercy of Rupa Manjari and under the control of Rupa Manjari. So that very Rupa Manjari came to this world as Srila Rupa Goswami. How powerful is Rupa Goswami? And on this way he has disappeared. So in this way, I am offering my mm, Pushpanjali <laughs> offering of flowers at the lotus feet of Rupa, Rupa Goswami. This is the Pushpanjali of this very brief and insufficient, inadequate glorification. Uh, and I pray that Srila Rupa Goswami may sprinkle His mercy on me and may sprinkle His mercy on all of you that we can serve the lotus feet of Guran Goranga forever. Sila Rupa Goswami Pada Ki Jai Bali Vrindavan Gahai Lala Ki Jai Sarasani Wali Ki Jai 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 Sri Rai were the last words of Rupa Goswami before he disappeared from this world but he left this treasure with us try to follow him fully outwardly from the beginning first with faith association with Vaishnavas going passing through anatomy routine slowly slowly until this gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Mahaprabhu wanted to give to come into the heart for those who will follow Rupa Goswami Rupa Raghunatha Padi Paibe Akulte If though someone is eager to follow in the footsteps of Rupa and Raghunath, then Kavi Hamo Bojavo Say Yuga La Priti Then you will understand the Yuga Priti, beautiful love of Kishore Kishore Ju. Hare you mentioned something about the stars and going inward and searching the stars. Yes, I saved it for tomorrow. I mean, Sunday. Can you give a small example? It's very important. It's very important. We'll be discussing. I already prepared the Monday's class. Okay. So you, there's a verse of Rupa Goswami: Prakta na duniki chasti yasya sat bhakti vasanaha esha bhakti rasasva das seva riti jayate. The taste for bhakti rasa rises in the heart for those who have some scars from this life and the previous life. So in the commentaries of Jiva Goswami and Krishna Chavitako, they've analyzed how these some scars come and the thickness of them, how they become illuminated and how they lead to the realization of bhakti rasa. So Rupa Goswami has written, um, what is that? Bhaktanam uh, Riddhi Rajante Bhaktanam Riddhi Rajante Sanskara Yuga Lujwalam that these two types of sanskars, Paktan, Paktani and Aduniki, they have to become illuminated uh, before one can uh, taste rasa. So that all oh, that explanation and the commentaries, it will be the first part. Because the first part, part of the class is always Tapta Siddhanta and the second part is always Leela. So on uh, um, Monday we'll be looking at all those verses that examine that subject. In detail. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, sorry, Sunday. Sun, Sunday, yeah, Sunday it's here. Excuse me. It's Sunday here. Monday is Balaram Purnima, so it will be another topic of Balaram and Monday. So, but you can see those verses and you can prepare. What time? Four o'clock. Oh. Quarter to four, maybe better. Yeah. Because you come at quarter to four. At four o'clock, I'm starting a broadcast. And it's a course that I'm giving on Nam Tattva. And it's part three of a course on Nam Tattva. And then after that, then I'll be speaking on Rupa Goswami again. So it's actually two classes on Sunday. So we'll start early at 4 o'clock. And which um, scripture? Bhakti Samhita Sindhu. Yes, yes, yes. Every way? It's the um, uh, second wave. In the uh, southern division? Second wave, yeah. 
Sorry, no, it's the second division. First wave. But the first number I don't remember. Second division, first wave. Paktana Aduniki Chasti. Yasasat Bhakti Vasana, Asha Bhakti Rasaswada, Stasya Bharati Jayate. Rupaka Swami has described about uh, the ingredients of rasa. Now he wants to show how one, how one attains it. Then, another question? No? Good. Then we'll see. Um, about this, I got some scars. Um, even, even when you heard from, um, from such self-realized souls, but Afterwards, you feel you didn't hear anything. Uh, how the hearing should be that you can count them as gata samskars? Are these also gata samskars when you don't mm -hmm. really hear and you even did not see that? Oh, I was in the association of such a soul and I could not take, I could not really hear from him. Does these things, if you have such kind of impression, because this uh, also this is also gata samskars. No, because the Konishta Adhikari is not doing Uttam Bhakti. Uh, when the faith is very strong and the disciple is very surrendered, then the impressions will slowly come. And uh, Nishta, Ruchi, now in Ruchi you start to experience a little bit. And then the actual experience of the uh, Garda Sanskar will come in, in the stage in Asakti, in the end of Asakti and then in Bhav. So when you are uh, Kanishta Dikari and you meet very elevated souls and you hear from him, then those impressions are not Gata Samskars. Impressions, are, impressions can be there, but you cannot access them because there's too much covering of Anartha. Mm -hmm. So always there's benefit in meeting with great souls. But uh, if we are not surrendered and we have a bad habits, we're not following what to speak of Raganuga Bhakti, Vaidhi Bhakti, what to speak of Raganuga Bhakti, then that's why Bhupa Goswami Upadeshamrita has described that Vachu Vegam, Manasakurda Vegam, Jiva Vegam, control the tongue, don't get angry, and all of these things. And especially Atyahara Priyasascha, Prajapuniya Magraha, overeating and over endeavoring in mundane activities, associating with worldly minded persons, all these things, they destroy Bhakti. It's Paul Bhakti. So you can't, though the, some blessing is there, but it's, you cannot access it. Because to access Garda Sansa, you have to have Ananya Bhuti. We discussed that earlier in the class. Bhavanaya Padeyastu Bhutain Ananya Bhutina. Until the Chitta becomes completely stable, then one cannot access the Garda Sansa, deep samskars. So what is the sadhana of someone who cannot access? It's, it's according to their stage. From from Shraddha up to um, the end, towards the end of Anartha Nirvriti is Konishta Adhikari. And then Nishta is the Madhyam Adhikari. And then Ruchi is Uttam Adhikari. Yeah, that means Uttam Adhikari, the highest eligibility to perform Uttam Bhakti. I'm not speaking about uh, Madhyam Bhagavat, Uttam Bhagavat. We're speaking about three types of Adhikari, the eligibility to perform Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Mm 